Welcome back to Chatter on the Wire. Let's see what trouble I got myself into this week. So Satori's been around for roughly 15 years now. Uh, actually, it's longer than that, 17 years. Um, it started as a different name. Um, and uh, originally, all I was looking at was DHCP fingerprints. Um, it really kind of took off in 2007 when um, we presented at Black Hat Japan and there was a lot of interest in the source code or at least the fingerprints. I was happy to get the fingerprints out at that point in time, but the source code uh, was not entirely mine. I would probably say it was 95% um, plus, but I had had some help from a buddy uh, over in Romania um, helping me figure out how to get, uh, what was the product I was using at the time? Delphi, which is basically visual Pascal, uh, how to get that to do multi-threading, because I didn't understand that at the, that point in time. Anyway, since the code wasn't entirely mine, I didn't feel comfortable uh, providing that. Uh, I did make a Linux pre-compiled version because there was a lot of interest back in the 2007 through 2010 time fr frame to get this working on Linux so people could run it as a ongoing service behind the scenes, but because it was pre-compiled on Red Hat, it was very limited in its use. Uh, fast forward to 2000, what would that be, 19? Late 18, 2019, uh, I finally did get around to rewrite it in Python. It had been a lifetime goal, to say the least, to get that done. But um, anyways, it's been out here for about two years for people to use. Uh, the fingerprints themselves are used in a few other products. I will link those in the description. Uh, one is uh, Nether. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he just got a hold of me within the last probably two or three months to let me know he was using the fingerprints there. It is a product kind of like Wireshark, uh, but as it's processing through the packets, it now also will try to do passive OS fingerprinting on it. Um, one other product that's using it is uh, Network Miner. Um, out of Sweden. He was one of the original people that helped a lot with the format of fingerprints. Satori is a passive OS fingerprinting product. It um, does, the, at least the Python version, does TCP, um, HTTP uh, server and user agent, SMB, and DHCP. DHCP is where I really got started on a lot of this, and I'm very happy that I've kind of stuck with this fall by the wayside uh, there for a few years as I got sidetracked on other things. But with the Python release, I have got um, a bit more motivated in keeping the fingerprints up to date and have been asked off and on about different aspects of it. So you can see it in the background here kind of running. Um, got here where it's TCP fingerprint, basically SYN packet. And this is a lot like the P0F format here. Um, I've tweaked it just a little, and this would be P0F version 1. I know uh, version 3 is out these, in this, this day and age, but I haven't really kept up on what they've been doing. Um, I also do SYNAC on the TCP side, which I believe he moved away from uh, sometime over the years. On the uh, HTTP packet side, packet side of things, we're doing user agent string. Um, if we look back at this other one here, and this is one of the machines on my network. It was either Ubuntu 20 or Windows 10 18.09 with a score of five in either case there. Um, the user agent string, and again, user agent strings can easily be faked. I understand that, but uh, most people don't go to that um, extreme. So it's picking up stuff here. It's an Ubuntu and Linux box. HTTP server, whoever we're talking to on the background here on the Firefox uh, tab there, is an Amazon Web Server or ECS instance. If we scan down a little farther, let's see, did it pick up any DHCP packets? So Satori is only going to be able to fingerprint what it can see on the wire. And so typically for like work, I have this on a span port and I'm looking at all traffic in and out of our um, business there. And it is amazing how much traffic and how many different devices we see there. Um, let me try in this background here to do a release and renew on the via, or on the host that's the screen on. See if I can type. I don't know if it'll actually pick these up or not. So 
There you can see the DHP request. And because I lost the main one, it's actually looking at the ones on the VM itself here. So you're seeing the Ubuntu uh, 20 version here. So DHP, different DHP traffic here. Looks like I have some unknowns. I need to verify this acknowledgement on this one and potentially add this in. Ultimately, Satori has been around for a long time. Um, I miss aspects of the Windows version of this because it actually has to just doing straight output to the screen like this. It provided a nice um, summation of everything that it did. On that note, uh, maybe we'll do, if I still have the old Windows version, we'll do a quick uh, demo of that next. So here you can see the Windows version of Satori. Um, it has not been kept up to date in years. Um, one of the things I didn't go into on the Linux version that I guess I'll have to uh, revisit is it doesn't have to be a live capture. It can do a pre-existing uh, PCAP. So let's see what all is going on on the network here. So we're seeing a lot more stuff here and so far no overall OS guesses on any of the traffic. Um, part of the problem here is the, the fingerprints on this one have not been updated so uh, it isn't going to be quite as useful there. But you'll notice we have DHCP, DHCP version 6, EIGRP, HPSP, HSP, blah blah blah. The list goes on and on. Again, I haven't migrated a lot of these over um, to the Python version. And part of that is because I didn't find that these were nearly as useful in the end as they were back in the 2007 through 2012 timeframe when I wrote this. Um, again, Satori has only seen what is broadcast out there, and especially when this was a Windows program. It wasn't like I was gonna be, drop it onto a span port. Um, at, at work to see what was all going on there. Um, the Python version is quite a bit faster, uh, and part of that is just due to how, with the Windows version, every time the packet would come in, or a fingerprint would come in, we would actually look to see if it was a fingerprint that had already been uh, found, and if so, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't do anything but update the last seen time frame. Let's see, if I just go out, so much I can do here, we'll see. I honestly have no idea if there's any fingerprints this is, this will pick up, oh, one it did find in Ubuntu uh, machine. So, quick display instead on the exact same file uh, that has, they have some, some old PCAPs from the early 2000s that I'll feed through here that I know it has fingerprints for. And I'll do that, th that same one through on the Linux version as well. So back in 2010, I think, pack capture, I was staying at a hotel, Leighton, uh, can't remember if that was the hotel or the city, but uh, here's pack capture from there. And just like that, it's done. I don't know how big that file was. Let me verify. It was the 10 meg file, so nothing too big there. But it goes through pretty quick. You can see the overall OS get guess. Nice tree here. Doesn't work too well in this one, but if we go to. Overall, we can see each of the different fingerprints that it picked up at the time. Let's pan out this one here. You can see for SMB, thinks it was a Windows XP one. Um, SMB two traffic it saw, thought it was uh, Windows XP SP three. And each of the scores are kind of based on how sure I was of uh, what that is, but some of this also gets compiled a bit better. So let's look at this one I do. Look at just that one here, and we know there's SMB traffic, so. Look at that. 
you can actually see what the host name was, where group it was in, a whole bunch of other information. You can start seeing the native OS and native landman, which is part of that SMB2 score. So it actually is an SMB2 traffic. It's just SMB, a secondary one. Um, Anyways, that's a quick look at the old Windows version. I don't believe this is out there available for download anymore. Uh, if there is interest in it, I can always put it back out there. So running the same file here on the Linux side. Again, uh, slightly different since we're, we're not doing an uh, existing interface on it. We're reading in a file, minus R. There is a way to um, actually read in a full directory. Um, more in, in that if you really want to, or interested in that uh, it should be in the readme or in the python code itself so this one will go here fairly quick if i can actually click in here and, and so just like that it's it's uh, chewed through that uh, 10 meg file and just spit out all the same answers that the windows version did um, except now it's in a text format so you could feed it into something like gray log and easily access this later, which um, there is a gray log. Um, uh, what are those called? Um, it's, 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 it's basically how to parse through a lot of these files. I do need to update it a little. I think I found one bug in here recently that I haven't uh, put back into the master one, and that's for HTTP server type uh, responses there. But that should be out hopefully by the time this video is, uh, if not within the next week or so, uh, when I get a chance to update that as well. Uh, but if you look back, even back with that one, so I have uh, these TCP ones that I wasn't able to fingerprint at the time, and evidently I've never come up with fingerprints for since then. Um, I probably could figure out if I really wanted to, like fairly easily right now, since we're looking at 100.51 was an SMB browser packet uh, with Windows XP. Um, if we went through here a bit more, we could probably filter that out. How, how about we do this? And we'll see all those. So SMB native. So SMB native is actually very accurate on what the OS is. Um, I have I don't know if I recall ever finding that uh, it was lying to you on uh, what that is. I'm sure there is that possibility out there, but uh, it was a Windows XP Service Pack three, and so. Hopefully, by the time this gets released, I will have upgraded that uh, fingerprint there to that. Now, with that said, uh, <laughs> Windows XP has been dead for quite a few years, so updating this old fingerprint from 2010 maybe not be the most uh, useful um, use of our time here, but it is amazing how many times I still find XP, uh, 2003, NT4, um, even Periodically, uh, Windows 95 or 98 boxes still out on networks, um, specifically because of old lab equipment or other things like that. Um, I don't think I found a 95 or 98 box or, um, for probably four years now, but um, that's still kind of sad that we were finding those just a few years ago. If you have questions on Satori, uh, let me know. Um, it is continually getting updated periodically, uh, not nearly as much as I would like to, but it all comes down to time. Uh, now that I have gray log behind the scenes, um, I need to get that so it actually automates my daily uh, fingerprint load from work and get that thrown in there so that it's easier for me to find these because parsing through gigabytes worth of log files each day or every month or so when I decide to update fingerprints is not uh, easy. And I'm hoping that the gray log piece will um, help there. If you are interested in adding fingerprints to this, uh, please email me and let me know. Uh, the Git GitHub link will be out here uh, as well in the description. Well, that's it for this installment. Please think about hitting the like button, subscribing if you aren't already, and clicking on one of the other videos. See you in the next one.